Looking forward to seeing what our guys got today. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a while since we tackled anybody live. Um, we won't tackle the whole time. You guys will be here. I forget how many periods, but we'll get you six live plays today. So you'll watch those first six live uh, today, and, um, you know, it should be a good day. Pat, how much did you enjoy the first day of pads back in the plane? God, no, I don't remember. Golly, I don't know what I ate for dinner yesterday. You, you didn't know? get excited when you strapped Of course we did. I mean, it's the same excitement. It's the same excitement. You know, I think our kids would get excited. Um, you know, there'll be nerves. I mean, everybody gets nervous about the first day of pads as well. I mean, there's always nerves, you know, as a head coach, as a player, because there's co it's real contact out there. There's, a, there's no sport like this. Um, and uh, But our guys are prepared. We've, you know, we've practiced the right way as far as just the tempos the last few days, and they're ready for this. I think a lot of times defensive players probably wish they could hit the quarterback. I mean, they go through all summer, oh, yeah. they can't touch him. Is this, yeah. because of Phil and how big he is, is this maybe one of those years where the defenders are kind of like, nah, I'm okay, I don't, I don't need to tackle him? No, I don't think so. They want to hit him because he's not looking. He, you know, it's a little different. I mean, you know, if I got my back turned, yeah, it doesn't matter how big you are, everybody will hit somebody. I always laugh at the DBs when, you know, if they take a shot at a guy with his back turned. It's like, you know, hit him when he's, you know, he's facing you. But, you know, I think that quarterback's got a tough position. He's sitting in that pocket. He's got to be patient. He's got to be looking down the field while he ignores that rush and trusts his pass protection. So I think, you know, anybody that's standing still and you can hit, they don't care how big you are. Uh, but we'll stay off the quarterback. we got to do a great job of staying off the quarterback. Historically, your linebackers have really gotten into your, your, your first day of pads. I, hear them, I usually hear them talking about it. Who are some of the younger linebackers that you're excited to see get, get off of? You know what, uh, you know, the young guys are you're still learning. Like Jordan Bass is still learning, but you can watch him burst and run. You're like, holy cow, he's going to be really good. You know, Rasheem Biles, he got in a little in some scraps yesterday. He's a little scrappy, so he's, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some, some talk out there when that number three group gets out there and, and uh, and, and gets rolling, I think, so. But your veteran linebackers, the guys who are going to start, how, how are they looking? The Shields and, and the They look good. I mean, Shane Simon, Bengali, I mean, you know, they're, they're ex what we expect. But, you know, with those guys, you know, we expect more details. I mean, it's just like we want you to be better than you were in the spring. There's constant, you know, progression there. And, you know, if you're not getting better, you're staying the same, and that's not good. Is there a, in terms of physical attributes, is there a guy you've coached that, be, that you were comparing Bengali? Is it, uh, uh, comparison point or someone you know you, you, you know I got a call from Bruce Feldman a couple of weeks ago maybe a week and a half ago about a former linebacker of mine at, at Miami Ohio in 2003 was who was a freak you know he was like one of the first freaks out there Turner Nande was his name um, but you know he kind of reminds me of him a little bit um, you know um, but you know you know we've had a lot of good you know linebackers Greg Jones the guy that you know we had at Michigan State and and uh, you know Savassier is tearing it up down He's tearing it up down in Tampa, from what I hear. So making plays every day. So I mean, there's, there's, you know, everybody's a little bit different, but you know, we're just going to continue to work on his motor and consistency. How's the punting battle going? How have they been looking? It's going good. Um, you know, both of them are really good punters. I think. I think we got two pretty good ones, and it's just going to come down to the details and, and who you trust more when it comes down to uh, that, that opener. Pat, is it a day like today when your competitions that you're having on the offensive and defensive line when they really start to, to matter? They do. I mean, Saturday in our jersey scrimmage will really, really matter. Today, I think we got maybe three periods that are live, you know, and that might be in, be included in the one, you know, so just going to wean into it and not just go crazy. Hey, we can go live today and just, like, you know, I think the NCAA thinks we do that sometimes. Like, you can only, they try to limit what you do, but, like, it wouldn't be really smart to go do that today. So we just, you know, want to be able to coach it off the tape, make sure guys got their feet underneath them and, and keep our guys healthy. Got progress that Derek Davis making. You know, he's making progress every day. Um, he, he's making progress every day. I tell you, Montrevious Lloyd showed up yesterday. It was kind of like, ooh. You know, he looked like he's got a little motor to him, so he was interesting as well. How many backs do you need to have ready? You need to be three, four, five, five, you know, it, it depends. I mean, <laughs> if you stay healthy, you only need two or three, you know. Uh, but you never know how that is, so you got to have them all ready to go. Any third team or practice squad guys who kind of like some of the some of the practice starters. squad. Well, you know what I mean. Not practice squad. Probably. Guys, guys that are, are further down the depth chart who are kind of like itching at some of the starters or higher guys that you're like looking at for good rivalries that you've seen as far as what you're looking forward to. Today. You know, uh, you know the Rasheem Miles is interesting. You know, Jordan Bass are both interesting guys just because of their athletic ability and um, so those guys are always intriguing. You know, we just got to get them going the right direction. Um, Trying to think in the secondary, you know, Cruz Brookins is, is a guy that you got to keep an eye on. He just, he's smart and, um, you know, it's just a process for some of those guys. But, you know, we got to keep an eye on him as far as special teams go. D-line, I don't really see anybody at this point that, you know, it's a little different O-line, nobody at this point. Um, you know, Ty Ray's doing a nice job, you know. And then, like I mentioned, uh, 
uh, Montrevis, and then those four freshman receivers. You know, I think I've mentioned those guys every day uh, with, with Zion and Lamar and, and um, you know, and the other two. When's the last time you guys have had a player with a physical build similar to like Malcolm, where you just have so, so much height and size? And you know, Lucas Crawl was kind of one of those guys. He, he kind of looked like him, and you know, and uh, you know, Malcolm's just trying to learn the offense. I mean, you think about that. I mean, just like there's you know still mistakes out there, but he's big, he's athletic, and he's got just such a great attitude. I love that kid, just because he's got a great attitude. He's a, you know, guy transfers in, he fits our mold of who we want as people, and that's what I'm most excited about him is he's fun to coach. Will you be at Acushur on, on Saturday, and it, will it be live? And what time should I be there? It'll be live at 7:30 at night. We're going night scrimmage oh, really? at Acushur, so uh, get your get your general mission ticket from EJ, <laughs> and, and uh, good luck to you.